All right, so health is important to you. We'll check this out. This is one of the most impactful things you could do for your health in a positive way. Be with people, have good connections, build good relationships. The data on this is incredible. It's actually alarming. There's a loneliness epidemic that's exploding across Western societies and it increases risk of everything that's chronic from heart disease to diabetes to even dementia. The world is making it easier to be isolated. Don't buy into it. Be with people. We talked we about hang the, out, the study that compared uh, that to like smoking cigarettes, right? Well, I got some new data for you. Okay, let's yeah, hear it. Yeah, dude, this is, this is wild. So first of all, we are in a loneliness epidemic. Um, there is a 39%, by the way, this is over, only over the last less than a decade, so not even 10 years, 39% increase, which was already, it was already growing uh, at that point, but 39% increase in feelings of loneliness across the board. You ready for this? Mm. The age group of 15 to 24 has 70% less social interactions with their friends than the previous wow, generation. 70%. 70%. Now check out <clears throat> what they've connected to loneliness. It's almost like I'm talking about uh, like a bad drug or something. 29% increase of heart disease, 32% increase risk of stroke, and a 50% increase risk of developing dementia for older adults, all from loneliness. Wow. Isn't this wild? Yeah. Do you, do you think um, it's a bit skewed just because of what we just came out of, you know, of to almost three years of of COVID stuff where people started to... I'm, I'm glad you asked that because I looked that up and there was a spike during the pandemic. It did not go back down. Mm. So... At all? Like we haven't returned? Interesting. Yeah. So people so, change their behaviors around that time. And yet, even though it's now being reported by CDC, <sighs> like the flu, we're not returning back to kind of our old behaviors pre-COVID? No, what's happened is... Um, you know, and I was talking to a friend of mine uh, about this this mm. weekend, and you know, he 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 explained it quite well. He said we've made being lonely or alone so alluring, so convenient, um, and so the way of the world that meeting with people now is no longer the default. It used to be the default, like you had to meet with people just to do something, everyday yeah. things. Yeah. Now what's happened is. Um, We've made everything so it's it's almost like meeting with people. All you're really thinking about is the anxiety. I got to dress a particular way. Oh, we're gonna have conversation. Yeah. Like I'd rather not because I can get away with um, not really meeting with people. And then connecting with people online, a lot of especially that age group I said, fifteen to twenty four, they'll they'll make the argument. Well, I, I talk to my friends all the time. We connect online. It's not the same thing. Not there's, even close. Yeah, there's got to be a multitude of factors too. I mean, like some companies are just still getting people to come back from work from being remote. And so it's like having those natural interactions where mm -hmm. you cross paths with people, it's so much easier to avoid all that now and just get like food delivered to you to, um, you know, just stay, just stay isolated. It's, there's a lot more uh, businesses out there that are catering to that. I think that's, it's, you really have to go out of your way and be intentional to hang out with, with your friends and with other people. Yeah. I'm interested in your point about loneliness becoming more alluring than it was before, mm -hmm. because it makes me think of that. Um, what's that paradox called that Chris Williamson shared on his podcast. I, I shared it a long time ago after he did, I thought it was really interesting. And it's basically where um, if something is less than a mile, we'll walk it. If it's over, Two miles, we get in a car and we drive it. If it's somewhere in between, we mm -hmm. choose the 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 path that's actually not the smarter path because yeah. it's like in that in that sweet. I forget what that paradox is called. I remember that. I forgot the name. Yeah, but it makes me think of that when you say that. Like loneliness has become actually so much better than what it was. What's it called? Region beta paradox. Yes, a phenomenon that people can sometimes recover more quickly from more distressing experiences than from less distressing one. The difficult events create better outcomes over time. So in other words, because loneliness has become so more alluring because of DoorDash, because of our cell phones, because of Netflix streaming, it's not that bad. 
It's yeah. not that bad. And it's so, but it so it like slowly rocks you to death because it's not totally. that bad. And you assume that, oh, versus say 30 years ago, you'd be like, what the fuck am I gonna do? I got nothing to do. This I gotta I gotta get up and do something. I gotta go meet people. I gotta figure something out because this is so uncomfortable. The example that I was given was um, you know, meeting with people digitally. Mm -hmm. is like uh the a good analogy would be like comparing pornography to connecting with a human being and obviously having sex or or mm -hmm. intercourse it's you you get something but you don't get the real value um arthur brooks says that facetime for example you facetime somebody you get the dopamine but you don't get the oxytocin so we've identified this um, in terms of neurotransmitters and like oxytocin is how we bond with people. Mm -hmm. Uh, but loneliness is exploding. It's absolutely exploding. And, and part of the reason why it's, so think about fitness, for example, let's just go back for a second. In, in the past, you were active by default. You had to be active. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, oh, you go to the gym. Well, you know, I have to go physical labor and do lift rocks and break things and whatever. So we were active naturally, but then what happens, we made life so alluringly sedentary mm -hmm. that you have to actually schedule activity. You actually act, you have to think about doing hard physical things to reap the benefits. This is now what's happening with human interaction to where it's very easy to not meet with anybody. So think of being a teenage boy, you're 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and th yeah, there's a lot of, it's a scary to go talk to girls or go meet up with people. Cause you're gonna go out, you gotta, okay, I'm a little self-conscious and you know, I gotta talk to someone that might reject me. And so, oh, but wait a minute, I could just, I could just talk with people online. I could play video games and put on my headset and it's not the same thing though. It's not even close to the same thing. And so it's exactly what you said, Adam. It's like uh, the frog that's in the in the in the water that's slowly yeah. boiling. It's yeah. very deceptive because it does have like you have those outlets where you can still talk to people, and if it's digital, it feels like you're still connected on some level, but it's not. You're not receiving any of the benefits that you do in person. And you think what's happening is that these these kids that are are choosing this way of socializing via virtual reality type of stuff or on the internet or whatever it takes probably years for it to compound enough before they're like, something's wrong, right? Before they, before they can recognize it or somebody else can recognize it in themselves. That's, or even worse, they don't know the alternative. Right. They don't They've know. always been this right. way. You know, it's right. like, uh, it's like getting fit for the first time. And then, you know, how many times have you gotten a client Yeah, yeah. fit so they, for the first time? And they look back and go, oh my God, I had no idea. Like, yeah. Or how many like, times have you had people tell you like, <clears throat> oh, my sleep is good or my energy is good yeah. or I feel good. And it's like, and then they actually get good energy. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, wow. I didn't realize that it could be this good. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. It's crazy yeah. because, um, the default in the past, like when we were, we were, when we were kids, if you didn't go outside. I mean, there, there was you, you didn't talk to kids. There was so you had to go outside, and then when you went outside, everybody was outside. So you were meeting with people. That's got its own challenges, but at least you had some connection. Families don't get together like they used to. <clears throat> you know, in the past, there were community ways of meeting with people on a regular basis. Church being one of the main ones. Like, uh, and there's still some towns like this, right? Every Sunday, people get together. That doesn't happen anymore. Block parties don't happen anymore. Neighborhood neighbors barbecuing together meeting with each other, just dropping by. Let me ask you guys this question. Uh, when's the last time somebody just dropped by your house without calling? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I have a little bit, I have these kids that come by. That's great. But yeah. that's it. That's yeah. rare. Yeah. yeah. It was rare. It, it, that just started again. And so I think too, we recognize how rare that is. And we're just like, yes, get out there. Like do, do all the things, go play hard, you know, skin, your elbows up, like, you know, just take risks. Like that's the whole thing. It's like kids, I, I feel like the risks, um, they're just not seeking that out because too, the, it, they can, they can get that same sensation digitally or they're like risking and they're like doing all these things on video it's games, not the same. but they, yeah. And in the real world, they, they won't even attempt anything. No. I, I think, the, I think it's exacerbated too, because of the connection that even parents and kids have with each other too totally yeah so it's like one thing that you've cut out the rest of the society but if, if you at least had a normal social uh connection with your own intimate family you might be okay but i find that you're seeing more and more of that too where it's like i mean i don't know how many times we were out at a restaurant this and i you know looked over at the table right next to us and you know three kids two parents uh each kid had their own separate iPad. 
watching their, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like they're at this dinner table together and but everybody's alone. still alone. And so you got to think that, man, that's got to be making it accelerate this even more if it's already bad enough that they're probably not going out there with everybody else. But then even when they come home and their their immediate family isn't doing it and they're all kind of isolating themselves even when yeah. they're in, in, in together, you know? So- Dude. I'll call myself Nobody's out. Nobody's making eye contact. You know, that's the, the big one is like, if, if I'm ever hanging out with a kid and it's like, I'm trying to like make that eye contact. A lot of times like kids have a hard time now just even looking up and, and looking yeah. you in the eye. I'll call myself out on it. Like when I made that example of someone stopping by, like my instinct would be to get annoyed if someone showed up. <laughs> You know yeah. what I mean? Knock on my door. What the hell? They didn't even All call. Right. Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? My instinct would be like, they should call before and we need to schedule this. <laughs> why don't like, you what text is, me? Why don't you? Yeah. Why? You know, but you know, uh, recently I've been really paying attention to this personally. Um, you know, uh, about once or twice a week, I'll have a day where it's, it's just me and the kids uh, and my wife gets out of the house and she'll try to meet up with friends and we're trying to make a big effort on, on, you know, having these kind of social groups that we develop or whatever. So I'm alone with the kids and, um, I'm, I, it was a little bit of a learning curve, but now I'm finding myself like so present in finding the joy in the everyday regular stuff. But it was so easy for me before it would have been so easy to disconnect a little bit. All right, you guys do that thing. I'll be over here, put on a little TV, do a little that, whatever. And like you said, that intimate, that your own intimate family, you don't have that. Yeah. That connection because you just want easy, uh -huh. you know. You want you don't want the, but well, it's not, not even, just, it's, it's, not it's, even it's, that you just want easy. I think like to your point earlier, like it's become so alluring. I mean, I like watching YouTube videos of cars and cool uh, yeah. stuff. Like it's it sucks you in. It, you easily can get uh, looped in, and mm. so I think it's it's partially that. Sure, there's definitely the part too where uh, you know these tools have become like glorified babysitters for for parents. Mm -hmm. So that's so I get that. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the, the the selfish allure of like you know wanting to get on and be entertained yourself. And these these you have these moments of boredom that are just these split seconds, and it's so easy to reach for the phone or the iPad or the TV and click that on and then disconnect from everybody that you're around. Like. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I think about this a lot. Like, it's a yeah. it's, uh, bunch I, of observers and not doers. You know, it's I, like everybody's watching everybody else do everything. So to me, that's kind of like the, you know, Doug and I, were we, we got a chance to go hang out again this last weekend. And I just think, like, for me, um, it's just m making the effort. Because I'm notorious for this, right? Where I'll, I'll uh, you know, I got this going on and that. Totally. And it's like, you, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then, like, and not do it versus and and I know every time I like I make myself like the weekend before when we went up like I I almost didn't go up to go riding and it's like man then I get up there and I'm like I'm like God I I love here I love when I'm here I love it's when so I'm, easy to stay at home it is that's what it, yeah. you know, that's what you're saying and it's so uh, you know a lot of it is just the making that effort to go go do to go do things physically and then it's then it is easier to to disconnect from those versus like making excuses of why you can't. Uh, and getting stuck. Yeah, at home. we started doing this thing, and we there was a few weekends we stopped, but we started back up where we do this like communal get together on Sundays, and we invite every anybody's invited. It's a potluck, and everybody cleans up. Everybody brings food. It's supposed to be informal instead of us like you know getting everything making a stressful thing. Show up, let's hang out, bring your kids, make it super relaxed. So we had some friends over with their kids. And it was amazing, man. Like, you know, the kids played and yeah, you got to be on top of them. You got to watch what they're doing. And at first you could see parents are anxious or whatever. It's like, don't worry about it. You know, they make a mess. Who cares? Like, yeah, what's yeah. the big deal? And we had a great time. In fact, I, I, I'm, I'm getting more of these activities that encourage that kind of stuff. You know what I, I found? Did you guys ever play with, they used to sell these where they were like, it looked like a rocket and you'd add water to it and you'd pump it up. Yeah. And then you'd hit a button and it'd blast mm -hmm. off. Oh yeah. So I went, I'm like, dude. Do they make those still? <laughs> I bought one that uses a two liter bottle. So you fill up a two liter bottle with like a, like a little bit of water. You put it on top, you pump it, and then there's a long string that you pull. Uh -huh. Bro, we were, it's like hours, hours you of fun. Shoot, Just there, blasting yeah. it in the end. And my son's like, is it going to go on another planet? I'm like, no. That's not <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I just love doing that with my kids. But I could see my kid, like, you know, because we, we, we've been really practicing this. And then the, the, the rocket went over to the neighbor's yard. And my son, who typically is shy, he walked over there with me. The lady opens the door and he talked to her, you know, excuse me, my rocket came in your backyard. Can I walk back there and take a look at it? And I'm like, look, and I'm like, what? 
This oh, is cool. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, they read your energy, the kids, yeah, you know? That's really anyway, good. Anyway, was, it was a good time. Today's YouTube giveaway is Maps Aesthetic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Anabolic and Maps Anabolic Advanced. Both incredible workout programs, both half off this month only. If you're interested, click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Did you have a, a, a meet this weekend? Yeah, again? we had another tournament. That, How the boys uh, do? It was down in San Luis. Did it good. Um, there's, there's a few, like, so there's three different events, and um, they did really good on the double mini, which is like this trampoline that's sort of like you got to run. It's a running start. And you hit it from the front, and then like you, it's like a double jump, and then you flip off of it. Okay. Um, so they crushed that. Like I think Ethan got like um, second, and I think Everett did too. Wow. But um, the other ones not not as great. Um, but it it was just because like I mean the level of competition has gone up, and and there's like a few moves that like if you don't nail it perfect, it's just like it just sets kills your score. Yeah, kills it, dude. So. Uh, they're still working on. Is know. that how they judge kids at that level? It's like, um, you know, you should be able to do certain tricks by a certain age, and like, and then it's like that's kind of like the standard. I mean, I guess that's no it's different levels. Yeah, I mean, that's very. If you watch like X Games and you watch snowboarding yeah. or skateboarding, it's like you, there's a minimum. There's like, well, there's like a you got to be able to do certain tricks, or you're not going to score high. Right. Enough. Yes. Right. So it's and like, even when you do you be, like like yeah. so he had a um on his trampoline he does really well with his routine but it's like not as complex as some of the other kids so they add like all these layers of complexity in that level that he hasn't added yet so he yeah. like nailed it i'm like yeah like killed it but he got last place because it was just like they were doing these like triple flips and like all these like other added uh difficulties to their routines and yeah. so it was like okay we got to figure this out and start working on a few of those other skills and, and develop them so you can throw it in there now but have you had exception with that is insane. oh yeah have, nice. now have you had a moment or had a time where you guys have seen a kid who like is like level like way above like oh, everybody yeah. like, and is it like because it's just like so obvious when he gets out there and runs or does it like is oh, it way obvious yeah there's there's a few kids um a lot of times it's like these kids from like the eastern european countries and oh, stuff yeah, and they start them so young <laughs> and, they, and they're just their form is just immaculate you know uh, but there's this one kid that's on their team who's younger. He's like, I want to say he's like probably like nine or I think he's like nine. And um, he competes at a higher level than like Ethan and all the other kids like way older than him. Wow. Um, and uh, he'll do this this um, tumbling where he flips and then he does whippets where or whips, I guess they call them, where they do it without hands and they just kind of flip. And then he does like at the end of it, like this crazy flip and then landing and sticks it. And it's just like, dude, who is this kid? <laughs> He's just like, everybody's just mind blown. This little kid just like, um, so athletic and explosive. How do you know like, where you're at? That's such a crazy skill to know where you're at in space. Do you they spin me like that? I don't know, up, down, left, yeah. right, where, you know. You got to be obsessed. Like this kid's like one of those that works like extra hours he's in there like seven days a week like he yeah. doesn't mess around dude. gymnasts and um divers right they have to have the best proprioceptive ability yeah because they could just you, you watch divers spin off yeah. the almost the exact same thing yeah you, you're talking about right is, is there a crossover oh i'm sure there's lots divers, of divers yeah. yeah a lot of people that were that like were you do one especially you the do trampoline one? version yeah, yeah they do yeah they do really well in um diving or or um the other one was um it was like freestyle. It was like a ski event where um, you launch off. And oh, like jump, a downhill jump? Downhill jump where yeah. you spin and do all the tricks. Yeah. So. I just watched. That's so funny you said that. I just watched a video of the longest, I don't know what's called, ski jump of all time. You ever seen them when they jump up oh, yeah. and they put their skis like this? Yeah, yeah. And the dude, he comes down like he's going to hit the ground. And I think he caught a gust of wind and kind of went up a little bit and <laughs> floated all the way oh, down, shit. dude. I'm like, holy cow. <laughs> Who's the first person to try that, by the way? You know oh, yeah, I mean? the balls to like just fly in the air. <laughs> just like to that. jump yeah. off something. And it, all, it, it, it always feels like I remember when we used to like, we used to video all of our stuff when we were jumping. And, you know, we'd take them snowboarding, wakeboarding, and we'd make these like little highlight reels and shit. 
And when you're doing it, it feels way bigger than what it is. Oh, and then you like, see the video. Yeah, yeah. You you hit it and you're like, oh shit. Then you come back and you're like, you rewatch it, you're like, what? It's just <laughs> you're like, what? It's so and then you see those, yeah, then you see those videos of guys that are just like, you know, 50 feet in the air, like crazy. You're just like, oh my God, I swear I was like 10 feet in the air right there, and you're like four feet off the ground. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now that's what always used to surprise me is like how much faster and bigger it feels when you're in it. And then when you go back and you watch it, so that, that like I don't even think half the people really reckon unless you do those sports, right? Realize like, man, when they go big like that, it's like uh, it's on. A, yeah, when they send it like full blown, you're just like insane, what? insane. Yeah, I and would, I know it I'd piss my pants. And gymnastics air. too, like physics plays such a big role, right? So if you get too big, you can't do certain moves because you're just too big. Oh yeah, yeah. So there was this one kid that was six two, uh, who was there, who was like, I don't know, you, I guess. He was on his way into high school, but was still doing the gymnastics and like he was in his own little class, but it was like watching him do the the tumbling part where you like flip end over end, you know, with like a six two guy. That's crazy. It just looked bizarre. And he looked like Dolph Lundgren. He had like a full on mullet and like he was just this tall kid just, uh, over everybody. I mean, I'm always his extra when you have somebody who has like yeah. a body type that doesn't fit the sport and then they do well, I think it's always fascinating. I mean, that's what made I think Juji Mufu so famous. Yeah, it's just a bodybuilder just doing flips didn't make sense. The physics, you're yeah, like, whoa. yeah. If he was a 130 pounds skinny kid, yeah, nobody cares? would care. I mean, yeah. as as great as all the cool stuff he does, it's like that's not what's impressive. It's what's impressive is he's not supposed to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like his body type is not supposed to be able to oh, yeah. spin and move like that. Although um, you see him paying for it though, yeah, now, right, dude? I was so I was hanging out with the parents one night, and uh, we were do you just, have anything in common by the way besides gymnastics? Are they like normal people? Or are they, <laughs> is there like a gymnastic parent? You know, like there's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know how like I'm every, not gonna trick like navigate through this. Like, <laughs> yeah, be careful. Be listen. careful. Of someone listen, bro. <laughs> <laughs> there's some weirdos, but um. <laughs> Also, there's some cool like parents, and and so thankfully I was hanging out with some some of the cool ones. But um, we were just like chopping it up around the uh, fire, and the kids were swimming in the pool. We stayed at this hotel, and uh, they were actually talking to me about um, like a trend. Like it's good because um, they all go to different schools, and and this is like um, uh, kind of like a hub for a lot of different uh, local schools in the area. And so I kind of find out what like a trends are in this school and the other ones. All this. Apparently like um, the thing that they're talking about with prom and like a lot of dances and stuff now um, that we used to go and we get drinks ahead of time and we just like take shots or whatever and go in. And then that way, cause then they, they, you know, search you and make sure you yeah. have it oh, on oh. you. Yeah. So you did that in high school. Well, yeah. Damn. You, you didn't? Crazy. No. Was no, I never drank. I never drank in high school, ever. I mean, I was so good. You know, I just, I just say that to make myself sound cool. Um, no, I actually did it. But um, so yeah, these kids, I guess their thing, so they don't get caught, is like they'll take like soaked tampons. Oh come on, bro! And, I read this and put it in their buttholes, in their butt, or their vagina. They'll soak a tampon in alcohol. So they get drunk, but you can't smell it. Yeah. And so By the they way, can't detect it. And, 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 and they're it hits you like, like twice as hard, hammered. doesn't it? Twice as hard. Yes. Yeah. So so you could get I was like, like, is this really a thing or is this like just, you know, you heard like some urban legend? No, this is like a thing, apparently. Like, One of the parents like was telling you this? Yeah. Or? Like like the kids have hacked the system, you know? I was like, what? wow, dude, that's crazy. I wonder if I would do that. I never would have thought to do that. And yeah, too. To get I, drunk? How dangerous. Put, put a temp. I would be like, you as, know. As a high school kid, I probably would have. Really? Yeah, yeah. I would. I did a lot of stupid stuff, <laughs> for sure. Was, what else did you put I'm like in? trying to think like, okay, how? what level of uh, uh, stupidity, where is that at? Like, yeah. Listen, <laughs> in high school, the about the only thing I would have done like that would have been if it was guaranteed muscle gain. Then I would have been like, sure, I'll do it. Yeah. I <laughs> to get drunk, no. I, I didn't care. I didn't care about that at that point in my life. So, no, definitely. That's I mean, that crazy. was- um, But that could get someone sick fast. Oh, yeah. I mean, we talked about this even with the powdered alcohol. What a horrible idea that was. <laughs> yeah, you know, too. like, and now kids are doing this with- uh, tampons like so like uh, i don't know dude that that's where i was like i sat back and was like man i'm 
I am definitely, you know, getting old. How do you check your kids now before they go to a party? <laughs> you <just laughs> spread your cheeks. Yeah. Bend over. <laughs> cough. Well, you know something's weird when your I son's guess, buying uh, tampons. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Not we, these I days. Mean, I feel a little worried. <laughs> and you know what? The teachers can't even say shit when the dude goes and gets tampons. Oh, like, I know, right? like, Can we say something? I know what you're yeah, doing, right? I don't know. Maybe we oh, can't wow. say anything now. Wow. That's crazy. So, but, so there's that, you guys. You know. <laughs> <laughs> keep on the lookout <laughs> which people are shoving boy. stuff in their butts <laughs> be, yeah i don't know the ingenuity that's yeah. the internet see this is like a, a side effect of the internet because yeah. there's only only way that that became knowledgeable or knowledge had to be the internet right mm -hmm. well like i mean you piece that together if you watch the um it's probably TikTok. what was the uh, i blame ben no, greenfield. no 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 what was it's the ben greenfield no, no 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 what was the um <laughs> no. he's always telling people put things <laughs> in the head. johnny knoxville show what was that they didn't oh, do jackass? alcohol in their butt yes they, jackass they, they, yes and jackass he took a beer funnel oh, to he his did ass a beer funnel yeah yeah but did they yeah, show him get the drunk show. yes he was like and he threw up from it because yeah. he got so drunk oh my so I mean, I, I, so that was the butt I, chug. I I remember the first time I had when I when I first saw that I didn't understand I didn't know that like you you actually would get drunk from that so I, and I'm sure a lot of other people didn't either so I'm sure that made it popular. All you gotta do is breathalyzer yeah. at the dance, blow into this. Nope, oh, can't come in. I, it won't it won't come up that way, will it? Of course it will. If you take it in the ass, yeah. Did they said that? No, it, I don't it, think it so. Detect it. I think that's part yeah. of why they do that, no. bro. Exactly. No, it goes no, right. No, no, you metabolize alcohol and it comes out in your breath. It's not because the alcohol was in your mouth. Oh, mm. I don't. That's, I I don't know, bro. I think I think you don't. Yeah, I think it would pass. Wise. No, dude. There's no way you pass a breathalyzer just because you put alcohol. <laughs> no way, dude. Uh, you may you want to check. I, feel like, I don't know. I feel I feel like like I don't know. You might want to fact yeah, check I, that. I, I, I think, think they're like getting a bunch away of drunk with it. Drivers would have figured that out by <laughs> now. I don't know. Yeah, I know that'd be the new. Hey, just, I just, hey, I wish I, I wish you we just had... reverse the breathalyzer. You're <laughs> fart on this real quick. <laughs> oh. I, hey, I wish things like Zbiotics existed when I was a kid because that was like we used to. I got sick like almost every time. Yeah, as stupid as I, you, like, you'd still do it every well, single. Because you go way past the line because you didn't really know. Uh, if you get a breathalyzer and you boofed, it's called boofing. By the yeah, way, yeah, that's right. I remember. That. It's going to show up. Told you. That's right. Alcohol is, is comes through uh, the lungs. Uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide interchange in your body occurs. Told you. The, the, this is also there's it's also just, it's more of a smell and a detection. Yes, thing, bro. Man. Breathalyzer is yeah. not it's not smell. This is also that what's that urban legend like? Oh, uh, suck on some pennies if you're gonna do a breathalyzer and it won't show. Oh up yeah, I remember that. that. Yeah, and that doesn't work either. No, bro. <laughs> Suck on I, some I think my, never my, that? Oh yeah, I had my buddy. I think my buddies did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my buddies did. They got in trouble at prom. And they were like sucking on pennies like crazy. It's called oh, boofing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if you breathalyzer at the dance, everybody will know. And mm. then you put a tampon on your butt for no reason, buddy. <laughs> yeah. How embarrassing! No, no you're that guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, anyway, dude, I read a crazy article about AI generated content. Did you know that there's people? So this is going to get keep getting weirder and weirder. There are channels on YouTube that they're targeting children because that's a really, uh, apparently that's the best market to target on YouTube with AI generated cartoons and animations that look like popular kids shows like Coco Melon and stuff like that, but it's AI generated and it's to, and it's generate getting a bunch of views and stuff yeah, and right. parents are figuring it out because they're watching it and it doesn't make sense. Some of these animations are disturbing. In fact, some of the parents are saying, and then they'll go back and report it and they're like, oh, this is AI generated. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I watched an AI generated short film. I sent it to you guys. Pretty sure you didn't watch it. Yeah. It was an AI generated short film. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Did you watch it? Uh, just part part of it. Of aliens yeah. invading the planet. Yeah, the weird. entire short film, it was 10 minutes long. So not that long. The entire thing was AI generated. Was it good? Yes. Oh, it was? Yeah, I mean, good enough. I mean, I could see how it's going to get way better. It had the president on there talking, so they obviously took clips of him, and the AI made him look like he was talking. It showed the spaceships and Vladimir Putin talking. It was this whole, like, it was like a, this really oh, crazy. Oh, yeah, entertainment is just going to completely uh, get a, a big facelift with AI-generated stuff, because, too, they're always looking to cut production costs. And so, but... I, I don't know, man. I don't know if it's like how long is it going to take before it's like, oh wow, this is a really like 
good story, well thought out. Like all the pieces kind of work together. It, you know, I think it's going to be a. While. I think it'll. Be I mean, you you had to think you have to think that we thought that like when CGI and stuff like that came out that it was going to ruin movies and TV and the graphics and stuff like that. I mean, you had to think it that, did ruin a few movies. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so so I don't know. I think it's just going to be another thing, right? There's going to be a, a genre of AI generated things. That is it, or is it going to be like it's where you're going to have your own AI generator, and so all your content will be personalized. And it'll make movies just for you. It's not gonna. Not, you're not gonna care about who else watches the movie. I don't know. Don't you think there's something about there's? I like mean, storytelling. You lose, well, you lose maybe the artist. You lose the generation. artistry out of that. Yeah. And and so maybe temporarily, uh, you will be entertained by that or like it. But then the, I think we'll still have this pull towards like well, true artistry. Well, here just more disturbing news on that end. There was a, a guy who started an AI. Uh, it was a porn site where it was. It'll, it'll, AI will generate what you're looking for. So you'll type in what you want and they had to shut it down because the searches and he said, his quote was, I don't know if people are testing the AI to see if it'll do it or if people actually are looking that. for this. Uh, and they didn't even say in the article what it was people were typing in, but mm, it was so disturbing mm, that they shut it yeah, down. Yeah, they're pro. yeah, I, I guarantee like a majority of people are just trying to put in the worst thing they can think of. Or mm. there's some e some evil Well, ass. that, yeah, probably both. I'm sure it's both. Yeah. You know, speaking of tech and stuff like that, did you guys see uh, the um, Amazon hot air balloon? No. Oh, yeah, look at look up, Doug, the Amazon hot air balloon for drones. Oh, I've how, seen this. How this is going to work. That's right, it just floats above you? Yeah, yeah. And then drones come deliver yeah. shit to you? Mm-hmm. It, you know, it, it makes more. So it'll be like a warehouse. Yeah. So originally, so ori exactly. Originally, I, I envisioned warehouse. it like you. It would <laughs> it would go from a, a like a, a normal warehouse. I'm like, man, that's gonna be crazy. Them travel, but this makes more sense. Where, and the balloon will be able to surveillance itself too. Because that was the other thing. It's like, oh, you're gonna have all these people that are gonna shoot things down. It's like, well, if you have this balloon that has all this surveillance on it, and it only drops it when it gets over a, a close vicinity yeah. to the the, the house, the proximity of the house. Well, now like, you have one in each like district or yeah, something like that, just floating around. And I, I think you can those things run pretty relatively. Cheap. You got it done. Well, I got some here. They say yeah, yeah, are not like. real. Oh, that's gonna be weird, dude. <laughs> They're gonna be everywhere, dude. That's gonna be so. Our weird. Our skies are gonna be just polluted with shit. I yeah. saw a video of like a real one. Are those all fake, right there. What you're looking at? Yeah, it looks like there's some fake ones here. So, Although that one on the left does look kind of like the one that I saw the video of. I mean, it does blow me away that right now. In fact, what did I just order? I just bought something right now on Amazon. I can't remember what it was. Overnight, it'll be at my house tonight. Yeah, it's right. Like, there's but there's stuff same day, two hours. Yeah, there's some Amazon Prime stuff you can get within. So two this hours. is going to be like what, fifteen minutes? I mean, just uh, <laughs> it's crazy, right? I know. It's so crazy. That's wild. I know. So yeah. they're just going to float them around basically, and then just drop. It'll be like a warehouse. Yeah, I've seen some of their warehouses too, where they have those robot. Um, almost looks like the what, what are those Roombas? Mm -hmm. But it but it has a stack of all these like crates on top of it, and it's just constantly moving and shifting it. Uh, and they're all on different like algorithms and patterns. That's and, the video the, I saw, Doug. Oh, look at that! Just flying down, just dropping. Is that wow. real? I don't know. Is it? I know. I, Andrew pulled that one up. It can't be real. It looks like an AI, probably generated. What a weird. It's hard. Yeah, I'm not seeing any real ones. Mm. Yeah, we're in that sort of. Uh, By the way, you know you can train eagles to take out drones. You guys know that, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They did that for the Super Bowl. Yeah. That's not, that'll be like the, it's like the future war. You know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll have hawks and eagles. You know what I'm <laughs> We'd be like yeah. those Mongolian guys with the. So, something, the, something less techie that someone that they're trying. I always wondered why we never had this. And I saw in Australia, they're doing this. They are testing out glow in the dark uh, lines in mm -hmm. the road. I've always wondered why we don't have that. Have you ever wondered that? It makes perfect sense. It makes total sense. Like we have is the technology. About does it have to do with the fact? Does it wear out or something? Is is that why we haven't done it? I don't know why we haven't done it in the past. Like it, it seems like we've, we could do a lot of pretty cool shit to get something to glow in the dark. Yeah, you know, where the sun's gonna light yeah, it up the or charge in the daytime. Charge it. Yeah. Yeah. It seems long. like pretty obvious that. And in how many times have you driven on a road that has no lights or something like that, and you could barely see the lines on the road, or it has no real lines on the road? Yeah. Like, oh, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Like, Where's that? In Australia. Australia, look up glow in the dark uh, highways or well, roads in Australia. Sense. Yeah, I, I never, I never understood why we never did that. I just saw an article on it that they're testing it out. Like, what do you need to test out? Like, it's going to be better than there it is right there. Look at. Oh uh, yeah, and it's got to be because maybe they wear out or something like that. Do you know how they used to make glow in the dark 
hands on uh, watches, wristwatches. Yeah, it was with some really toxic radium. Radium, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, and, and then the, the ladies that were painting them would lick uh, the the tip to to fine tune it, right? You know, the, the paint brushes. Yeah, they lick them, and, and they are all getting cancer. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah. my god, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, radium. Oh my god, I know, I know. Oh, you guys want to hear a stupid study? <laughs> I read yeah. this. Some of the people are sharing the study because they're like, "See," and I'm like, "Oh, uh, come on, guys." I'll read this study to you, and then I'm sure you guys will see what's so stupid about it as soon as I read it to you. But uh, it was a study on free weights versus machines. Yeah, okay. Okay. Here is the title of the study. This was uh, published in uh, October of last year, so relatively new. Adaptations and athletic performance and muscle architecture, meaning, I guess, muscle size, are not meaningfully conditioned by training free weights versus machine-based exercises. In other words, uh, there was no difference between the groups. Both training modalities significantly and similarly improved vertical jump. Now, here's the study. Ready for this? Mm -hmm. 34 men participated in an eight-week <laughs> resistance eight training week. program. Get, Come on, get guys. It. Already, I'm totally. I know. Away. <laughs> eight weeks is not enough time yeah. to see the... You know, machines are very easy to learn and use, and you can exert a lot of force on them. Free weights require more skill. Right. The reason why free weights are in in many ways, and again, a, a full a, a complete routine would com include everything, but the reason why free weights are so great is there's such a the 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 results you get from them continue so long because of the skill required, the balance required, skill the stability. Yeah. There's, a, there's a curve for that too. Yeah. And there and, and there's benefits to the fact that you you get that very quick with the machines. And so you see maybe a uh, rapid change or adaptation, but then it, the fall off is way quicker yeah. than if you're talking about free weights. Such a stupid argument. I know. To you know, it's like all these, all these strength training studies are all eight, 12, 16 weeks, um, which doesn't tell you it doesn't a give you a, a, a big picture of anything. You would need, and this unfortunately um, is just not realistic. Like nobody would fund a study like this, but you would want a, like a a year, two year, three year, five year study is what you would want, and then then you would get some some really good answers. And you know, people listening right now, this you want that because you plan on working out right for the rest of your life, not just for a super short period of time. Yeah, yeah. You know? Do you see? Uh, um uh, Elon Musk coming out saying uh, he, advocating for a UBI. I thought that was really interesting. Did he? Yeah. Hmm. Now is he advocating for it? Well, he with the cut or reduction. I think he was in like of, I, th I saw the interview. It was like he was like in Saudi Arabia or somewhere like that. Um, maybe maybe Dubai. I don't remember where he was at, but he was in he was some other country um, having the interview, and he was basically saying that the re where we're going, and I think with the innovation and and, yeah. all, and stuff like that. That we're gonna we're going we're going to have to move into that. Not so much that he's like we should because it would be better. Mm -hmm. But is this so. his worry and concern about the loss of so many jobs in terms yeah. of everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. sort of and what will all these people be doing? It out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not the loss of jobs; it's the changing of jobs. So you, some jobs will get lost, others will get created, but then you require new skills. To, yeah, but to that, that transition. So, yes, yeah, the transition. Rough, yeah. Not right. only that, but like okay, so what you just said is like has been proven for a very long time, forever, like, forever. But we are in like kind of unprecedented time. Like never in history did we ever have this thing like these. I mean, it's true. Like, will they be able to do everything? Well, so that's my point. Like, like, so like, to, like your, your, your like free market argument has been true forever because it's like, oh, well, you have these new jobs that we technology. Uh, yeah, no, there's take, wagon makers don't exist anymore because now people make cars. Right. right. And right. so other, th but other things opened up for them to yeah. jobs, but what if for the first time ever, like the, these, these robots, AIs, AI tools can now sort literally of do everything, do everything. It's like maybe for the first time ever, that argument might not yeah. always hold weight anymore. You know, although I agree with you, you know, historically it just opens up more opportunities and this is just, is just how it's always worked, but we've never been able to create something that actually goes and builds it for us now. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a, an interesting time and argument that, you know, we could be on the cusp of literally having 80% of the things that we have done, done by Now the technology. question is, is, is at the, at, at that point, if we keep going down that, that rabbit hole, right? Um, okay. So we have artificial general intelligence. It can innovate, create, it can do everything for us. Um, then does that, are there going to be rich people or poor people? Like, what does that look like? 
if if it does everything for everybody, yeah, who owns them? I don't know. Well, that's I think where he I think that's the argument he's making for like the universal basic income is yeah. that we'd have to come so, come with some sort of structure that way because it's like there's no need to have to go work and earn earn mm -hmm. revenue. Now, obviously, that's not that's this doesn't happen overnight. Like there's mm -hmm. going to be a, a, a gradual you know transition of what it looks like of mm -hmm. us working all the time to working less and less and less. But it does feel like we're moving more and more in that direction. I mean, obviously COVID accelerated a lot of things with the 50% of people working yeah. from home. Then you have a lot of these companies that are now advocating for four day work weeks. I mean, like it's slowly kind of moving in that direction and you see technology that's starting to come and or evolve and get better and better at being able to produce all this stuff. It's, it makes me wonder if it's going to be here sooner than than we may have thought it was going to be. It'll here. be a crisis. I think I don't think it'll be a crisis because we don't have enough stuff. I think it'll be a crisis because people are going to be like, "Well, what do I do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. where's my where's well, my you, meaning? School. Where's my purpose? You know, you know what it reminds me of. We've talked about this before. Um, I remember watching my two best friends' dads. Um, both had like you know hard labor type. One was a truck uh, truck driver. The other one was backhoe and grading, like you know hard labor jobs that they worked, they built, and mm -hmm. worked really hard most of their lives. Finally, get to retirement and retired, and of course, initially like amazing, you know, yeah. go golfing, a Hawaii trip down to Mexico. I mean, they're doing, and then it's like six months goes by, and yep. it's like depressed. Yep, you know, and don't know have anything to do, don't want to do any of that stuff anymore. And it's like. So imagine the entire world getting to retire, you know, <laughs> like imagine how many That's people scary, dude. it's hella scary. It's, 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 it it's make any sense. and then you add in the fact of how this conversation all started, where we've also lost touch of community and, and meeting with people. And so now you have all this free time to spend with people, but oh, you don't really, you just consume more con digital content and just go down the rabbit hole even more versus using that free time to connect with people in person. I mean, I don't know. Would it cause a resurgence in the? Do you guys think it would it would cause a huge influx of people seeking um, spiritual practices? Yeah, probably yeah. right. Well, already because they're you like know, you get a sense people are looking for something difficult. You know, yeah, like trying to get their or hands some meaning with something, and yeah, well, yeah, a spiritual quests. You know, whatever. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of like. Um, sort of uh, journeys and epiphanies people are going to be. Yeah, seeking. years ago I came up with that. That's like, you know, you ever daydream come up with like scripts for movies? Justin, I know you do. Yeah. My idea was <laughs> that this was like the future and that people were like so stuck. Oh, what do we do? And they're like, you know what we should do? We should create a virtual reality world that we can go in and experience challenge. And that's the one we live in now. You know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we made life so easy we had to do this again uh, yeah you know type of deal that's a that's the movie don't steal it from me someone's gonna write that script now mm. i just know it anyway yeah. um crazy stuff crazy yeah. stuff so zbiotics we had our did you guys do uh i know you brought it up earlier but did you guys do a saint patrick's day celebration we didn't we were just we were no we just, like my first we had just got back in town right so we doug and i flew in yesterday so it's i i we did we had some friends over and had some um some alcohol we didn't have uh you know irish alcohol we just had mimosas i don't know if that counts or no, whatever sorry <laughs> <Does> that <count? laughs> it's not really it's not really St. Patrick's no, Day. No. <laughs> zebotics really is uh scary effective it's scary how effective it yeah. is you, I, I don't it's feel been, like it's I been, drink. Uh, it's been nice for me because I, uh, up until that point, mm. I rarely ever drink. And yeah. I have a wife that likes to do that. Like Katrina will enjoy a drink here and there. It's actually nice to be able to enjoy that with her. And I've actually felt like, you know, oh, this is nice. Like I never would think, I mean, I did just a couple, like what, two weekends ago, I think it was two weekends ago uh, when I was barbecuing and, you know, yelled up at her, hey, what's, uh, can I open that Rombauer? And she's like, what? You're just going to crack a bottle of wine? Like I would never do that in the past. But because because you I feel like garbage. Yeah, because two glass because because two glasses of it would make me feel crappy. I, even not, not even getting drunk from it, just two glasses of it. But now, like, I, it doesn't matter if I'm having one or two glasses or six glasses. I automatically just go to the in in the um, pantry and crack a. Did you guys bring then, some to when you guys went down? To, I know you guys went to Mexico to do. No, I didn't. Bring stuff. It. I didn't. I didn't bring, it. I didn't bring it. I didn't yeah. drink much. Yeah, you guys just went down. I only. I did drink one day, but um, I had the most amazing pina coladas actually. Really? Mm -hmm. Did you guys go to the same place we went to last time? No. Different place? Yeah, we stayed at a place called Nobu. It was uh, so famous for the, the Japanese uh, chef. Is that how Yeah, so he has a bunch of restaurants that have become yeah, quite- Palo Alto has one. Mm -hmm. Southern California oh, has yes. one. Oh, yes. Yes, I've seen that. Yeah. 
All right. Yeah, it was cool. All I, right. I mean, now you were saying that you saw because you were in Mexico, so you're not you're out of the U.S. Yeah. You were seeing a lot of people wearing oh Viore like crazy. I mean, it's like, everywhere. Like just yeah. There was a time when when we first because Viore like did for the listener that hasn't been listening for that many years. Uh, we were Viore's first uh, advertising channel, right? They hadn't done any commercials, hadn't done any ads. They weren't working with any podcasts. We were the first partnership with them. And so there was a while there where if I saw someone who was fit and they were wearing Viore, yeah. it was like- a, It must be a listener. Yeah, there was like yeah. a 50-50 shot that they would be a, a mind pump listener where it's definitely not that way now. I mean, they it's become so dominant now that it I rarely ever see a, a dude wearing Lulu. I'll see a dude always wearing, if you're wearing athleisure wear, you're almost, al almost always Viore. They've crushed that. And market. I was telling, we were sitting in the airport yesterday and I was making that statement to Doug while I was mid sentence going like, it's crazy how many people are wearing Viore. Like literally a dude walks right in front of me with Viore pants on. You know, like, I've been stopped by people who don't have no idea about the show. None of that stuff. And they'll, they'll stop me. Like, you're, you're the, you work for Viore because the ads, <laughs> <laughs> you work for Viore. <laughs> like, I wish I was that good looking that they picked me specifically <laughs> to was, be an ad, I was a model. to model. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I have a podcast. That's the whole deal. You know what's cool though? Speaking of Viore models and stuff like that, I do think it's neat that all, one of the guys uh, who we hired to do one of our programs years ago, I think we hired him for our hit program first, mm -hmm. which yeah. we did years and years ago, has become a regular model for oh, Viore yeah. now. So oh, they, wow. they got he, him Viore from us. Viore and Tonal. He got yeah, that's right. He got Tonal that, also. Yeah. So oh, wow. I, yeah, yeah. I thought that was I thought that was really interesting. Dude, that's okay. This is what I just ordered on Amazon. I just remembered because I have a note up here that I'm going to try something. I haven't tried it yet, so I can't vouch for it. But have you guys, okay, so you, you know those old, um, I don't know what you would call them, uh, like those Indian gurus will lay on like a bed of nails or whatever. Yeah. You've seen that stuff yeah, before, yeah. okay. So they make these mats. They're, they're acupressure mats. Yeah. And they have spikes on them, okay? I've seen them. And you've seen them? Yeah, I've never tried one. Okay, before. so I don't know. It popped up in one of my ads, and I started to read reviews about it. Now, there's like, like little plastic. You do extreme yoga with it? Or huh? Is that what that's for? What? Extreme no, you lay yoga. them on no. your bed and you sleep on them. No, 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 no. You don't sleep on it. So this one, you lay on it. It's these little sharp spikes on it, and there's different levels. So yeah. I got the low level because I'm like, I don't know what it's going to be like. You lay on it, and apparently it You're relieves- You're hella present. It relieves- <laughs> Yeah, fuck yes. <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> ma it's magical. It makes you super present. So, hey, you know what? I was thinking about <laughs> yeah. this too. If Look, look at these mats. Yeah, yeah. So zoom in on the, like, on the spikes. So first off, I thought about this. I'm like, I will not lay on this with my kids around me because my son will jump on me oh, yeah. if I'm on the ground. Of course. Look at these little spikes. Okay, so I read the reviews- and people are like, um, there's no affiliation, by the way. We're not sponsored by any company. They're like, oh, it's really uncomfortable. If you can get through the first minute or two, <laughs> no shit. then you get incredible relaxation and anxiety relief. Apparently, it's really good for stress relief. Okay. And I mean, so don't you think this is the same mechanism that yes. like to shut the CNS off as like a it's cold a plunge does? Correct, yeah. or, Correct. That's my idea. Yeah. It's, that's it's, my thought. It's, it's got to be the same thing with the vibrating plates. Yeah. It, it's all that I, to just distract the uh, signal. I don't know if it's like a vibrating plate. I think it's more like it sucks. Yeah. I think it'd be, so, more like cold it'd be more like cold plunge. Yes, or yes. Yeah. But like you're that. getting trigger points uh, in different directions, which is diverting the signal. I mean, yeah, maybe. Right. Yeah. I'll let you guys know what it's you know what it's like, but but the the, the models in the pictures look like they're having a good time. <laughs> yeah. Read the read she the looks comment. comfortable. <laughs> yeah, no, the comments are like uh, like people are like, oh, this is intense. What even led you to this? Were you talking That's to somebody? No, like, it was. Please, I got hit with an ad. I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I got hit with, with an ad, and I thought this might be interesting. You know, lay on it for ten minutes. Yeah, maybe read while you're on it. Um, but apparently, like so there was one uh, comment I read where the guy's like, make sure you watch the video. Yeah on how to adjust yourself on it or you smash your crotch on it. Yeah. How, yeah. I mean, okay. So are, are you connecting that? Obviously this is like to bring down stress, anxiety, that type of deal. I, right? It just make yourself present. It really is. What okay. Is that what it is? Yeah. 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 I mean, I, can, I feel like I got, I can't not be Well, this present. one's on kind of like the same level of, uh, uh, smart, I guess <laughs> like stupidity. Uh, so d I saw this video for football on ice, which, <laughs> is that, a thing like an funny. actual thing in like a, an arena so wow. people dangerous. were watching and i was like oh my god do they have ice skates like hockey but they're playing football I'm like no they're just in like smooth shoes and they're like running trying almost like you're you play broom hockey you know yeah. but you're like 
playing football. Why? It, it is the stupidest. It'd be so dangerous. So stupid. Yeah. Cause like you're going to tackle somebody and then what? Right onto the ice. Like in, like if you land, like talk about, uh, they're obviously helmet potential. Helmet yeah. They got helmets. You know what? It's I like, bet it's safer than regular football. Yeah. I mean, you don't get as much. You, you're not going to hit them with as hard. Yeah. You're not going to get as God, much. Yeah, and your feet aren't going to get. Imagine, the, imagine the, the, the whiplash of the head on ice. I mean, that's like playing on concrete. Yeah. And they, they can't really stop and, and, uh, control oh. their cuts and everything. So I feel like, like, and you the can't forces but, you produce are going to be nil. Yes, I think you're not going to hit them as hard. American and, and you, ice football. I didn't even know this. Was and your and your feet can't stupid, plant. Dude. Show me a video. Doug. It's it, video. It, like it literally looks like what you would think. Like <laughs> this is just ridiculous. When, when people are in recess and they're like on on ice and they're just trying to run, they're like ah, yeah, they're into each other. It's pro it probably is safer if you think about it. I mean, you might be. How right. many injuries happen in football because your cleats? Uh, get stuck to the ground and you try to cut or turn most, or hit. Yeah. A lot, right? Yeah. Well, most ligament uh, injuries. Yeah. Sure. Especially with uh, turf, right? Isn't yeah. that what turf that's is such the, a. That's the big problem. Yeah. If if the, we went back to regular turf, it'd solve a lot of problems. Actually. Yeah. So I feel like this is kind of, this might be safer. Yeah. Is it not pulling up, Doug? I kind of wanted to see. I mean, it might, yeah. but I, my thoughts was like, it'd be cooler if you had like, so if I was actually going to structure this where it's like, I would want to watch it because it'd be exciting. Yeah. Like this looks like kids like out there just being Messing stupid. Mm. Um, Like I would have like seven on seven with ice skates. And then you could like, you know, have like moving starts and like play almost like arena football. But see like, the it's kind of going backwards with like the evolution. Most sports, the way they evolve is uh, higher velocity, higher scoring. Yes. Like, so doing something that makes it more difficult to do all those things seems kind of backwards. Like everything else, every right. other game, football, basketball has evolved. <laughs> like, look how slow and it <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Look at this dude. Nobody's even close to it. He's just like. Yeah. Like, how do you play deep? There's, like, no defense in this game. No. Because you can't get there because you're, you're just sliding around everywhere. Yeah, nobody gets hurt it's doing dumb. this. <laughs> <laughs> it's dumb. It's really Wait, dumb. okay, where does the money come from to support a league like that? I don't know, dude. Like, is there there's that many people that are watching that that you can actually, or it's, like, all a bunch of people on their, their free time, Bro, right? Bro, yeah. there is, you can find almost any sport you can imagine right now. Okay. I showed you guys once the arm wrestling one where they punch each other. You saw that one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I the like the one where they're in the car together and then, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they're in a seatbelt. Yeah, they have a seatbelt. They, they undo the seatbelt. Like, I like that one. I like that one. Like that one too. That like one's that one. hilarious. In Russia, they have uh, fights with people wearing full armor. So swords and armor and yeah. shit. And they're yeah, hitting yeah. each other. Then they have MMA fights where it's like a, like a woman versus two dwarves mm -hmm. or something like that. And they have boxes where you can like climb up boxes and jump off yes. and like attack people. Yeah, dude. It's like, what? This is all people thought of it. I want, you're, that's a great question, Adam. But hmm. who funded that? Yeah. Maybe that's what we're going to do to the jobs. You know, we'll just figure out Fun your sports ridiculous like sports to just get into. Is yeah. it just stupid yeah. shit yeah. outside? <laughs> yeah. I'll be back, honey. Where are you going? <laughs> yep. Ice, uh, golf. I'm going to go play some ice golf. Did you guys see that video of there? There was this pro, uh, what country is she from? Uh, New Zealand. She's a, she's a female golfer pro. And she was just hitting some golf balls at one of those top golf places. Oh, I saw this And she, video. did you see this? Yeah. Huh. And she yeah. was videotaping herself and she's like working on her swing or I don't know what she was doing. Yeah. And some dude in the back is like, uh, Hey honey, you're going to have to follow through if you really want to hit it. giving whatever. her golf tips. Or swing. And she's she's, she's a, a pro. pro. Golfer. She's yeah. a pro. Yeah. So she's like, well, you know, sometimes when you know when you're, you're practicing, you're trying to change up your swing or whatever. No, 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 no. You got to like, it's like makes dudes look really, you know, the whole like mansplaining thing. Oh, like God. this it, happened it, right it, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he just keeps telling her, and she's looking at the she camera. Handled like, it really well. Like, yeah. And so then she she wallops one. Right. Yeah. What does the guy say? See, I told you if you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like his advice. You've been doing that the whole time. <laughs> oh, God. Bro. Oh, God. She's a pro, you idiot. Yeah. What you're doing there, you shouldn't be doing that. You should be right through, swing, follow through. No, you're doing too slow on the way up. I'm going through a swing change at the minute. So, everything I'm. What you're doing there is, is you're coming back too slow. You know, I've been playing golf for 20 years. What you need to do is, is follow through a lot quicker than is what you're doing there right now. Okay. 
I'm sucked into that show right now. That full swing has got me going. The, the series on that, it's really interesting right now. I'm not even a, like, I don't follow golf at all, but uh, they've done such a good job on that show. It's really interesting. Everything. What is on. it? Uh, so, it oh, go ahead. No, it's the, it's the, uh, it's on the second season and it's kind of like what they did with the F1 racing Netflix did. Oh, where they follow the season. Yeah. 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 So they're doing the same thing in golf. Like you're, they've, they've, they picked a handful, like maybe, I don't know, there's probably 10 of them that they're following of some of the top golfers in the world and they follow them and made a, a Netflix drama series around it. And it's just, if I, it's so brilliant because if you're not really into the sport, it's such a great way to introduce you. Like, mm. I, I mean, I feel like me watching one season of that, I have a really good grasp of like what's going on in the golf world now, like, which is so cool. Like that I could sit and watch one series and then feel are these, are these documentaries or series, are they funded by uh, the PGA or anything like that? No, Netflix increase? pays for them. Oh, interesting. Yeah, so these 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 golfers get paid by by Netflix for that stuff. Oh, wow. Yeah, and right now there's and part of why it's interesting to me right now is because of all the the competing um, golf league. I can't think of the top of my name. Live. Yeah, live. Thank you. Is that the one where they were offering? Saudi Arabia? Mm -hmm. Is that one doing they're, well? Uh, well, I mean they're they merged recently, so there's all kinds of drama going on. They they first so two years ago when it first came it came about. It, they they actually offered a bunch of top golfers a ridiculous amount yeah. of money to come play for them, and a handful of them did. Uh -huh. And so then there was this like draw like drawing a line in the sand. PGA was like, if you go over there, you'll never play on a PGA you know tournament it's like game. Asterisk on all your records. Yeah, right. So it yeah. was like, and then of course the guy, and then there was guys that actually turned down the money because they were just like, this is about legacy, and the PGA has yeah. been around forever, and you know I'm going to stay here type of deal. And so there became this like, you know, those guys over there, us over here. And then they came out with this thing where they allowed them to play in a in a tournament where they actually competed against each other. And everyone thought that the PGA guys were just going to wallop the guys that left because they, they thought, oh, the guys who mm -hmm. left for live, they left for money and they're not yeah, going to, they're not real. They don't care. The yeah. They're not, yeah. They're not really passionate anymore. They were just in it for the money. And one of the guys actually won. Oh, and so that no. caused even more. And then like, a, you know, fast forward a year later, Live and PGA come out and make a merger deal, and they actually merge merge the companies and the people. So now you have these guys who passed up on all this money. <laughs> they could have <laughs> that got fucked, it's messed up. Dude. It's hell. So there's all kinds of like, wow. it's a, yeah, no, it's like super. And th th I don't know, at least yeah, in, like hundreds of millions. Of to my knowledge, there's chaos. never been something like this in any other sport. It's like imagine if like uh, XFL yeah. actually took off and then. Stole yeah, a bunch of this. Successful. Yeah, yeah, like the drama that would be around the NFL wow. and so like that. So, dude, speaking of legacy, have you guys seen the training videos of Tyson? He's been putting them out. Yeah. One more. Day three. You still want to with me? Have you I haven't seen, seen you, the latest. So, what do you guys think? What do you? What's your thought? You know, I what's still. He's still fifty-eight, but. Wow, I wouldn't want to find. I mean, him. he moves, yeah, explosively. He's still, still terrifying. And, so yeah. here's here's what's interesting to me is for Jake Paul, this is a lose lose no matter what. Yeah, if he really knocks is. out a 58 year old, everyone's gonna be like, you. Stupid. Yeah, you beat up an old guy. Yeah. You're a dick, right? If he gets his ass kicked, he gets his ass kicked. It's yeah. just like, see, we've been telling you he's not that good. You know, so it's like it's. I kind of feel like that's his best case scenario, only because if he loses the Tyson, he loses the Tyson. Yeah, you know, and he needs to get a loss in to draw more people. I feel at this point, I don't know. It, it to me, yeah, it isn't very. Like, I went on a Tyson win-win video spree uh, recently. Watching all his old stuff. Oh god, yeah. that is just yeah, a, yeah. You, you know, some people are just anomalies. Yeah. That guy was terrifying. Fifty-eight though, I can't believe he moves like that at yeah, fifty-eight. I don't, I don't care if he doesn't have the same stamina or whatever. The way he moves is just doesn't. So what's I, I heard that the. Uh, the rules or whatever for this leaked. Did you guys no, read was, up it on was, it? It was it wasn't true. Oh. People are spreading rumors that they're gonna have headgear on. And they're gonna have like <laughs> twenty stupid. ounce gloves. And like, oh, like, stupid. No. Yeah, there was all kinds of like rumors on what was gonna happen. And uh, uh, okay. so far, from what I heard, none of that is true. It's gonna be like a normal boxing match for as far as I know. I'm most interested in the how they're getting paid because yep. it's supposed to stream for free on Netflix. Which means they must Netflix must have paid. They got to out of pocket it yeah. to them, yeah. Somehow, and that to me, that's the the only way this makes sense. If I'm Jake Paul, is if this is my uh, my walk off, 
Like, like this, you're done. After yeah, this. I'm done. Like I, I, I made my run in boxing. I made more money than most boxers will ever make in their life boxing. And I'm a, I was a no, but no name boxer. Look what I did. Yeah. I got to exit out by boxing Mike Tyson, win or lose, whatever, with the, one of the biggest paydays probably ever in history. And he walks away from it. Like to me, that that makes the most sense. Like if he does that. Well, I'm like, okay, that's a that's yeah. a way to go out, you know what I'm saying, and be done with it, done with the sport. Well, then his brother went on to like WWE, right? I thought yeah. that was a good move. Yeah, yeah that is that's what move. I mean. Like, if he goes and he moves on to something different now, and this was his this was his little run in boxing. Mm -hmm. you, speaking of like MMA and fighting and all stuff like that, did you see that Conor McGregor uh, was the uh, his debut in the movie that he just did, Roadhouse, was the highest paid uh like action like so sylvester stallone arnold so all those uh, like he got paid more to do that for his first acting debut than any actor previously before that you mean, so he you mean the it. highest paid deb debut or yes period? debut oh. debut well, not do you know pay. what the pay was yeah it was like four million or something like that that's I think. not bad at all yeah for your first Just acting debut. walk in and yeah for your first yeah. for your first one so he has the record for that he has a boxing record debut and he has the mma debut so Dang. for all three so, so mma boxing and now acting he's a brilliant self-promoter so mm -hmm. good so good mm. not impressive so is this That's a remake crazy. of the original roadhouse i think it is with patrick swayze right it's what i've heard it's it looks like it has a little bit of a different storyline but i think it is based i off never of watched the original one what no it's a classic no really yeah, dude, Patrick Swayze, like after Ghost and like Dirty Dancing, <laughs> I don't watch him. Fight. He did. I think he did Roadhouse first. No. Ghost came later, dude, bro. Roadhouse Ghost came later, but movie. not Dirty Dancing came out first. Uh, yeah, Dirty Dancing might be first. Does it I say was a kid when it came out, so I'm like, I don't want to watch that Dirty Dancing guy fight. Yeah. Nobody cares. Well, I mean, he has a bit of dance moves in his punching. Which is, Does he really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can tell he's got a dance background. It's good. I it's like good, it. though. Yeah, hey, I, I, I liked like Roadhouse. Roadhouse. I liked him in The Outsiders. He had a great. He was a great character. I thought. In the he's, I thought. Ro I thought. Ro I thought Roadhouse was good. It's a classic, dude. Yeah. I watched it not that long ago. It wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Maybe so wait, Conor McGregor's in the new uh, Roadhouse yeah. that they're doing, right? Yeah. So find out. Does he play Dalton? Is he Dalton? Is it actually the same characters' names and everything? Uh, yeah, how many Dalton. times have you seen Roadhouse, Adam? I own it. I have it. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, he's played uh, Knox. Do you know who Knox is? Oh, so that's not. So he's not Patrick Swayze in this. I don't know who. I don't. Oh remember. no. Uh, let's see. Oh, so Jake Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal yeah. plays Dalton. Oh, yeah, he's oh, the so main. He's, so he's his, Oh, so is he what? Um, What's uh what's the guy from Tombstone? Um, I don't know. This was one of your favorite movies of all time. Oh, oh right, the guy with the handlebar mustache. Yes, yes, the older guy. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. him. Um, oh, okay. So it is. It totally is based off of that. Wow. Yeah, I don't know if I put this in my favorite movie ever, but it was. It's a classic. It's a top ten for you. It's a good eighties, right? It's, a, it's an eighties flick, isn't it? A lot of attractive <laughs> yeah. action heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fun one, dude. Yeah, it's a classic. Yeah, it's no, tough. it's it's up there for hey. sure. Hey, we have the Park City House uh, up here. Are we? Uh, do we have openings finally? Because people are messaging. We do now. I think we, I, we just came off a run where it was pretty booked up. Um, but I do think there is some openings coming this month right now. So. And I, I believe this is, oh, I think we're finally getting some stuff done with the website and the videos of that place because right now there's like- Yeah, just people don't know. This is a place uh, right there, Park City, Utah. In there, it's outfitted with all the stuff we talk about, red light therapy, sleep systems on the beds. It's got a gym in the garage, cold dips, sauna. What else is there? Steam. Steam. Movie theater. Movie theater. And yeah. then, of course, you're around incredible outdoor activity yep. stuff in that area, both winter and summer. Yep. A bunch of things. And so you could go check it out. It's our place. It's Mind Pump uh, Experience. What's the website, Doug? Mindpumpparkcity.com. Go. Yeah, go check it out. By now, you've probably read or heard about all the benefits of probiotics, things like better digestion, better mood, better skin, better nutrient absorption. Most people take probiotics now because, well, they're good for you. Well, there's a company called Seed that makes the world's best probiotic. There's nobody in the same category. They are leaders in the industry. This is why we work with them. So if you want a probiotic that delivers all those incredible results, if you want the best probiotic in the world, go check them out. Go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump for 25% off your first month's order of Seed's daily Symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Lindsay from Georgia. Hey, Lindsay. Hey, hey Lindsay. How you doing? How can we help hey, you? Guys. How you doing? It's great to finally uh, speak to you. So a um, little bit of background. I've been listening since 2016, so I feel like I qualify as an OG at this point. You are. <laughs> um, so 37-year-old, six foot tall, about 240, 
Um, main reason I was calling is that in 2023, I re-injured um, myself. And so I used starter and two different versions of resistance to build myself up before finishing the year with anabolic. Um, and, and started out this year running performance with the intention to run aesthetic and finish out the RG bundle. Then you guys went and dropped performance advance. Yeah. Um, I'm also a volunteer mm-hmm. firefighter. And so now I'm torn. Do <laughs> I go with my original plan, run aesthetic, or do I go for performance advance? Performance advanced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, no question. Yeah. Especially someone <laughs> with your experience of training. I know you followed our programs. Um, and what you said about being a volunteer firefighter, like there's, I mean, I mean, you'll move better and the stuff in performance and, uh, advanced is, is, um, very unique in comparison to our other programs. Like what you're going to get out of that program, you won't get out of any other. You see uh, that Sal? I love that you've actually organized this for us so we can see the order that you've ran everything here. This is cool. Yeah, no. Cardio suspension, athlete, butt builder, kettlebell. No, you're set. Yeah, yeah. That that'll be the way to go. Um, especially with the power uh, training in there, and just some of the, the skills type training. Do you do you, okay. uh, have you have you gone through the program and looked at the skills training to see which one which direction you want to go? I have, and I'm looking at doing rotation. Awesome, because nice. there's so much on the fire scene that is unilateral. Whether you're pulling with a pipe pole or you're controlling a hose line that's trying to turn you. So rotational control seems like the most advantageous. If I run it again, it would probably be grip after that. Yeah, that's, see, that's I, great. Perfect. Yeah. I see uh, you haven't ran Map Strong yet. Have you Have you ran that yet? I have not. Uh, Strong is on my bucket list of programs I would love to run because I remember you guys talking about how great it is yes. for posterior chain. Yeah. And I've got a history of back problems, so that's uh, definitely on my list. You would, uh, Do you have it? Can I send it to you? Do I you do ha- not. Okay, let's send that over to you. I think that's a, a great great one to add to your collection. Uh, I'd there. love to see how you respond with the rotation stuff, especially for if you have previous back issues um, to, to reinforce, you know, stability and, and strength there for you. I think it's going to be huge. Yeah. And then do you have performance advance or should we send that to you too as, uh, as well, Lindsay? I bought it with actually before it even went live. I got the email before you guys posted it was live and had it purchased. So, okay. <laughs> all right. Awesome. We'll, nice. we'll, we'll take you. care of you on strong then. Yeah, so we got you strong run strong after you do the performance advance and that'll be a great one for sure. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys. All right, Lindsay. You, you have got a good it. One. Yeah, Thanks great to for see your you. Support. Have a great day. You Thank too. you. Good setup. Yeah, yeah. Good <laughs> setup of program. I love that she had it all mapped out like that too. That was really cool. Yeah, I wanted to ask her. I should have asked her how what her lifts look like and stuff. Uh, and how I, strong said, she I didn't realize she was six foot. I didn't yeah. either. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, 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 I mean, obviously, she's been in, uh, been in the forum and been following for a long time. So I've definitely communicated with her a bunch of times on Instagram. Had no idea that she was six foot. Yeah. What are the when you do? Do you guys have any idea what the qualifications are for volunteer firefighter? You still have to go through training and do the whole deal, right? Yeah. I have no idea. What yeah, the I would assume are. so. I don't know. I know my dad um, way back in the day, like tried to get in with San Jose and also down in LA, but like he had some kind of, it was like a scoliosis or a curve in, in mm. it. So they dismissed it. Wow. But, yeah. I used to train someone that did uh, uh wildfire. They would, they, they, for a while they were, they would go and, and volunteer for that. You ever hear about what that looks like? Oh, it's crazy. Oh, it's like you're out there digging and just yeah. tearing things up and trying to create. You it's know. crazy, but I would rather be a wildfire than like just a regular firefighter. Because a regular firefighter, especially oh, yeah. like in the city, they you're take a lot with- yeah, car accidents and stuff. Oh. Like people being decapitated. Like you get more of that it's type of stuff. A lot of carnage. Yeah. Yeah. That I wouldn't be I wouldn't be great at. You have to complete basic fire and EMS training, is what it says. Okay. Yeah, good stuff. Our next caller is Lauren from Canada. Hi, Lauren. How can we help you? Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm. I just want to say I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. Us right. too. I've been following you guys since like 2020 by recommendation by like another trainer. So it's pretty cool that um, I'm here today. Awesome. awesome. How can yeah. we help you? Great. Um, I was wondering if you could offer any recommendations in terms of like what training protocols I should follow um, in the week. I work as a massage therapist and on the side, I stand a lot. So, and I stand for a long periods of time because I'm a DJ on the weekend. Awesome. Nice. Um, 
sometimes I notice lower back pain at the end of a work day. So I would like to try to get back in shape and then be able to sustain the work demands. Okay. How, um, how long have you been doing massage therapy? Uh, about two years. Okay. So kind of new. And then have you noticed any fatigue or pain in your wrist, hands, elbows, shoulders, kind of the common areas that massage therapists will notice issues? Um, more so fatigue, but not like, I, I think I know how to manage it now. Okay, good. Okay. I, I think most important is going to be moving in different planes and hip stuff, like for hip mobility, just standing in the same position for long, long periods of time. Like and Katrina was a massage therapist when we first met. So this was an area that like we, like I really focused with her because she would lift and then most of her lifts were, you know, in the sagittal plane, real basic yeah. type of training. And she just needed to move in different planes. And so I think like a MAPS performance would be mm -hmm. the direction that I would take her and maybe, and then MAPS symmetry, like those two would probably be. Both, those will both be ideal for both things that you're talking about. Um, you know, core stability and strength is going to be important to reduce that yeah, back pain. Time. And it's really about the balance of strength between the muscles in the front of the core, the side of the core, and those internal core muscles. So transverse abdominal, abs, obliques, you're going to want to make sure those are strong to support um, your, your stability as you're standing. Otherwise, you will start to feel fatigue in the low back. And it's typically coming from either the erector spinae muscles of the low back. So those are the muscles that follow the sides of the spine and or the hip flexor muscles that attach at the spine, like the psoas. And what those do is they kind of keep you upright and when they fatigue, you'll kind of feel this tightness uh, across the low back. And so strengthening the supporting muscles help. Um, but symmetry and performance both have great uh, core uh, components. And then for massage therapy, and I'm sure you already know this, besides technique, right? So I worked with a, an exceptional massage therapist, and she would train other therapists, and she would talk a lot about technique and how to position your body. A lot of people don't know this, but it's a very fatiguing uh, type of work. I mean, working on someone's body really beat you up. If you don't position your body right and have the right technique, you'll 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 kill yourself. Uh, so that's number one. But number two, like strengthening the hands through full ranges of motion, the wrists, core stability, and then what Adam said uh, with the hips. I think both of those programs would be perfect. Oh yeah, emphasis on rotation, other planes for sure. Strengthening that so it supports your spine, your core. Uh, and, and work on, you know, the posterior chain as well, being so forward all day long and putting a lot of emphasis in that to, to sort of counter that and build that support, um, you know, in opposition is going to be huge. But yeah, those programs would be perfect for that. And then I think there's nothing wrong with doing other programs that we have. I think uh, anabolic would be great, aesthetic. All those other programs are good as long as you just remember to cycle back through something like performance and symmetry. So someone like you that's in that position all the time. I think should make sure that you're hitting performance at least once or twice a year because of what you're doing. Lauren, what does your workout look like now? Uh, it's kind of like once or twice a week. And then maybe I'll just go biking once a week as well. Okay. Yeah. That's, that works perfect. Just, yeah. like, just, I, just pick one of the performance days. Or two, depending yeah, on what two. you train. Yeah, yeah, so when you get performance, there's going to be foundational workouts. You could pick one or two of them. So if you do a two, that's fine. And then the mobility sessions are going to be so great for you. Yes, yeah, don't um, skip those. Yeah, and I would do those uh, on the days that you massage. So do like a mobility session before you go into work or before you, you do your DJing uh, or, where you'll be standing. Or before you go biking on the weekend yes. or something like that. So just make that a part of your, your routine at least a couple times a week. How many people do you work on when you're doing a massage in a day? Um, minimum four up to six. Oh, wow. wow. That's okay. a lot. Yeah, it is a lot. Do you have a break in between them or is it back to back? Um, for six, I put a break in, but for four, I just go back to back. If you have a break, uh, take those mobility sessions from performance, pick a couple movements in there that feel really good and do them in between uh, to prevent. Because what happens when you start to fatigue is the CNS starts to try to increase uh, stability by keeping some muscles tight. Yeah. But over time, they start to feel fatigued and pain. And so mobility just tells the CNS it could chill out a little bit, could relax. We can move through these ranges of motion. And it, it, it can really remedy some of those kind of overuse fatigue-based uh, injuries that we get 
uh, from doing the same thing over and over again. Even if it's just one or two movements that you pick to interrupt between these sessions, it would be great. Like, so even though we've, we program the mobility days out for you, you know, use, uh, you know, you have the freedom to pick what ones you feel give you the most relief. So like a, like a guess for me would be like 90 nineties or lizard with rotation is probably going to feel really good for yeah. you, mm -hmm. uh, after standing still like that. And so if you notice that as you go through these, mobility workouts and exercises that we've implemented in there and you recognize that oh wow when i do this one it just i feel so much better it opens me up i notice i don't have the pain when i do it make that a part of your lifestyle as much as you can because something like that it's not like you have to do it at a certain time you can do as much of that as we can especially when you notice it's giving you relief so find what those couple movements are that you really love and just make it a practice and part of your life yeah do you have maps performance or, or symmetry um, I think I have performance. Okay, we'll send you symmetry That's then, so you'll symmetry. have you'll have both of them. Thank you. All right, no problem. All right, Lauren. Um, may I ask a question? Of course. Yep. Um, you were talking about Sal. I think about hand strength, um, a wrist or hand strength. Are you talking about like doing more carries or? No. So that that's part of the hand strength, but what you want for what you do is you want to be able to move through lots of different ranges of motion yeah. and articulate your fingers uh, so that you don't start to develop. Because what, what tends to be common is people will start to develop elbow pain at the insertions of where their forearm flexors and extenders are. So a really good thing you can do, a really good movement you can do, and this is for anybody, is you can get yourself a bucket. You can fill it with rice. You stick your hand in the rice and then you open your fingers, you close your fingers, you rotate your wrists and just through the resistance of the rice. Squeeze the rice and make a fist. Yeah, move your hand through all the ranges of motion you can think of. And then when you feel fatigued, you stop. That's a great way to strengthen and reinforce uh, and prevent uh, some of those overuse injuries. Okay, that sounds cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really yeah, it easy too. Yeah. May I also ask, um, how did Katrina manage being a massage therapist? Uh, I mean, she did it most of her life, right? So her family started the first school over here in the Bay Area. And so everybody in her family, her sister, her brother, her mother, her have been massaging her entire life. One of the things that she always would teach or talk to me about, because I was always fascinated, like, how could you go hours and not get fatigued when I can barely rub you for an hour and feel like I'm done? And she just talked, she would always talk to me about the importance of leverage is knowing how to leverage your body and position it. And there's just a real skill and art to that. Yeah. And the more experienced you are, the more you know how to use like your body weight and angles versus like trying to muscle your way through massaging, which is what all of us, you know, non massage people do. Like when I go to massage someone, I think I'm doing it all in my hands. And really, it's amazing to me how she can just position her elbow or her, the, you know, the hard part of her hand or palm and just kind of lean into me and just give me the pressure to give me that relief, but without even feeling like she's working. And so, yeah, I think there's an, an art and skill to that. And as you continue to do it, you'll get better and better at that. But, uh, you know, maybe learning from somebody who you are around that has that skill on how to do that. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I know for sure she's got that because I have no idea how you guys can do that for six plus hours in a day and be okay. That's so a lot. Yeah. yeah. So good biomechanics. Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right, Lauren. All right. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. Okay. Take care. You got it. All right. People don't realize, I, I did not know. I mean, if you think about it, it makes sense, right? I didn't know how uh, physically challenging on the body massages if you're a massage therapist like their injury rate is through the roof if they don't learn yeah, incredible technique like you really got to learn like incredible technique and leverage otherwise you're just you know, same thing I'll, I'll rub my wife's shoulders yeah and after 30 minutes i'm like you're done yeah yeah, yeah you're, you're toast. just misusing yeah. all your energy i mean of course though right it's like anything else there's, there's an art skill. there's an art yep. and skill yep. to it yeah and you know the some of the best ones at it have the ability to apply those pressure that pressure that's needed to give that client the relief without a lot of you know physical labor on that's their right. part yeah. yeah our next caller is gage from south carolina gage what's happening what's going on man how can we help you what's up dude hey 
Hey guys, uh, nice to see you again. I just want to say I met you all at the Olympia. It was a pleasure to meet y'all a couple months back. Um, you actually had my girlfriend on uh, a couple weeks ago about asking about a running question. So we really love your content. She introduced me a couple of years ago. Just want to say thank you for everything y'all do. Um, but first off, just all get right into it. So I'm a competitive arm wrestler. Um, I, I compete at a professional level. And um, right now, my training consists of rotating MAPS uh, anabolic and MAPS aesthetic. And on your trigger and focus session days, I like to either practice the sport or do um, more like arm wrestling style lift, which ends, up, which ends up just being a bunch of like back and bicep. And I had fat grips and stuff like that. And I was wondering if y'all could help me figure something out. Like, I see a lot of high level um, top, top guys doing like, quote unquote, arm wrestling lifts such as like heavy one arm, you know, dumbbell curls, but in like a short range of motion or like heavy cheek curls um, or something like that. And I was wondering if you saw any, you know, benefit to doing a shorter range of motion, but like really heavy stuff and something like that. And then my second part of the question was, do you guys see any benefit from me running performance and strong or something like that? Yeah. Yes, I think so. Uh, shortened range of motion exercises, uh, strength training exercises have a lot of value uh, when it comes to sports specific applications. So for example, you see like high level basketball players. Now we're not talking about kids growing up where you're, you're trying to train and build, develop the whole body. And you know, I'm talking about at this point, college, uh, you've been training for a while you know, half squats and quarter squats have a lot of carryover, uh, than more yeah. so than like full squats, for example. So yeah, absolutely. You know, in arm wrestling, uh, isometric training. So heavy isometric training in that arm wrestling position or shortened range of motion, you know, kind of preacher curls with a dumbbell or preacher hammer curls with a dumbbell is excellent okay. uh, for what we're trying to do. Now, what you don't want to do is add that volume to the current volume you're doing. You want to make sure that you you account for the extra volume of adding those exercises, so that you don't just overtrain overtrain your body. So that's the one thing I would I would consider. Oh. Yeah, when doing that. Um, okay. And by the way, you mentioned other programs. I'll tell you a program I think that you would love that would have a lot of carryover. Believe it or not, would be old time. I was old thinking time. the same thing. Yeah, old time strength. Uh, you you'll develop incredible yeah. grip, arm strength, Upper and shoulder strength, stability. And shoulder stability. And, yeah, yeah, dude. I mean, that's, it's funny. We had our, one of our editors follow the program and a uh, strong kid. And up until that point, he was unable to pull 500 pounds off the floor without using wrist straps, followed, um, uh, strong, went back to doing a deadlift. And he's like, I pulled it off yeah. the ground with no problem. My hands were able to hold well, on. Just to the it. single arm deadlifts and then, yep. you know, overhead, uh, with the barbell holds and things like that. Um, it's going to challenge a you lot. You mean old timey, right? Old timey, old yeah, time yeah. strength. Maps old time yeah. strength. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. Old timey is what I was thinking too. Yeah, maps okay. old time strength. That's awesome. Yeah, it would fit I must really be well. behind because I'm only on episode like probably I think it was like seventeen forty six or something like that. So I'm a little behind y'all. So I haven't heard about that program yet. Oh yeah, so I need <laughs> oh, to get on that. It, it's called. Yeah, we'll we'll send it over to you, Gage. We'll send it over okay. to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll be set with that. But oh, I, I love. Thank y'all, man. Yeah. Thank you. Gage, I'll tell you what, I love isometrics yes. uh, for, for arm wrestlers. Like that is, uh, I mean, you know, this, you're a pro, you're a pro. Like if you can hold your position and maintain, uh, you know, that and, and, and not give up leverage, uh, it's going to, it's going to put you into the category and isometrics training is excellent. Yes. And the beauty of isometrics training is it doesn't really hammer your body as much as full range of motion training. So you could practice heavy isometrics even on off days, um, and you know, just kind of be careful overdoing the intensity, but, y uh, you should be able to be okay with that right. and just get stronger. One of the, um, exercises okay. you may, you may find in old time that I think would be amazing, uh, is a bottoms up kettlebell hold. Yeah. Um, just because too, now you have like, uh, that weight that's like pulling you left to right and, um, you have to be able to stabilize an isometric position and then two, you can press it, which challenges it even further, but go real heavy with that, man. That's going to be yeah. something else. Yeah, totally. No, that, that sounds like some awesome stuff. Thank you guys. I had no idea. So you said I could like, how many days of training is that program specifically? Is it two or three days? Uh, old time is three days. Like yeah. the, like the five days. 
Oh. Yeah, the whole thing's three days a week. It's a long program. Yeah, so okay. we yeah we kind of like okay. yeah we, it, you, you develop a lot of skill uh, with unconventional lifts. You're you're building your it's okay. it's programming based off of the bronze era strength athletes like Eugene Sandow, for example. So you're gonna do stuff in there you've never done before, but uh, for the kind of strength that you're that you need for your sport, I mean, it is it's 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 the most arm wrestling workout program that we have. I would oh, say. Yeah. Okay, and then there's no isometrics. I just need to add that into the off days, right? You can you can add that on the off days. Be, of course, be careful with the yep. volume. Yep. But I like isometrics on yeah. off days. Absolutely. That's the only it's that's the only damaging. thing that I was going to add and caution you is just just be careful not to add too much volume to where we go the opposite direction, and that's going to be based on how you feel. So if you if the works the yeah. workouts the foundational things are are pretty taxing, uh, be careful on how much you yeah. add. You might be better off finding an exercise or two inside the program and pulling it out and then replacing it with some isometric ex exercise in there, but really have to go after you feel, are you in our forum? Um, I'm actually not in the forum. So let me, let me have Doug put you in our forum also. And then as you're going yes, through sir. the program, I'd love to hear your feedback. I'd love to hear how it's going. And then we could, we can add, take away things as you're going through. So just keep us posted, check in with us. I don't know, once a month as you're going through the program, and the guys and I will take a look at how, how things are going for you. And if we think you should add something, we will. Awesome. Thank you, man. I just want to say I got a competition out in um, Las Vegas this weekend. So after I get done with that, I will uh, start that program and get ready for my next event. All awesome. right, man. Good All luck. Right, Gage. Good luck to you, dude. Thank you. all I appreciate y'all. Thank you. you good good one. If you were to go on my, you know, Facebook has reels too, you know? And so if you were to look at my reels, one of the things that is in the algorithm consistently is arm wrestling. Because <laughs> you watch <laughs> arm wrestling videos. I love it. I think it's, it's, you, it's um, so awesome. Yeah. It, you know, would, could you see, I'm trying to think, I was trying to figure out how I would like do some like cool isometric stuff, like taking like a cable, like a free motion, like really, really heavy and then holding in that position or yeah, even doing or a really heavy band yeah, you know, and, that and, you're grabbing. Yeah. And doing yeah. something like, I, I mean, another, I'm, a really classic way would be you take a heavy ass dumbbell, you know, a preacher bench, you've seen yeah. a preacher bench where one side is angled, but one side is straight up and down almost. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You lean over the side that's mm -hmm. up and down. You hold the heavy ass dumbbell with two hands, oh, that makes get sense. in position, then let go mm -hmm. and just hold it in position. And that's oh, a really, wow. really good. I, you, you see a lot of yeah, arm wrestlers so you do can really pack it in. Yeah, yeah. You see a lot of arm wrestlers do, uh, movements like that where they're just supporting a weight for, you know, X amount of period of time. Yeah. But you'll see these, these, like I said, I watch these reels and their isometric strength is it's in, unreal, oh dude. yeah. Like they'll go against something and the guy's just pulling on them, pulling on them. They'll just hold that position. Yeah. And then when they feel the other person fatigued, then they'll, they'll go for their move. I've actually whatever. never trained a client that, that did this profession. I'm trying to think of some of the stuff right now to be creative. What are some like internal, like I would think that explosive internal rotation would be something that would be valuable to them. Or is it more of a, you want to, you actually want to minimize uh humoral rotation you want your arm, you want your wrist, you want to be able to lock in a position and you want to follow your body. You want to stay as tight as hell. Oh, interesting. Use leverage okay, in your so body. You so you link don't it all the way to your You do blade. want that, but it's the body yeah. that's moving. Got to uh, get the lat really in, in there. Huh? And the shoulder yeah. and everything moves with the hand ideally. The, the further your hand gets away from your body, the more you're screwed. Yeah. And you're not trying to beat someone like with internal rotation. Like that. there's no leverage there. You want to stay tight. Torso. Right? Yeah, you want to yeah, stay tight and move yeah. all the oh, Okay, down. interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, no, see, I'd be all bad there. I'd be trying to do something. <laughs> yeah. 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 But That's I mean, how I got <laughs> slaughtered when I did that before. I realized that. Yeah. Like, my arm was too far out. Yeah, and then you see these guys, these champion guys. There's these dudes. It's just like a lot of them have these, like, just, just massive hands. Yeah, big just old, genetically big huge. Big old mitts. Yeah, it's like yeah. trying to grab their hands. It's like, knock you out. Yeah, just yeah. the leverage is insane. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out our hard gainer guide. We have a guide for hard gainers. It'll help you pack on muscle. It's at mindpumpfree.com. You can also find us on social media. Justin is at uh, on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. I'm on Instagram at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam.